Welcome everyone. Welcome. We pray and hope that you have had a nice rest the Holy Sabbath. For those of you that are viewing around the world, we want to thank you for your prayers and those who are also in the United States. Thank you for your prayers. Let us pray for Israel this morning. There is much, much fighting occurring. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, who is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, Elohim Yahweh, in the name of your Son and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, we bow before you. We enter into thy sanctuary in heaven, in the most holy of holies, in spirit and truth. I ask for the forgiveness of anything that I've done, my thoughts, my words, and I ask for the forgiveness of our people that are present, our family, and those who are viewing and will be viewing that thou mayest bring us and help us to be protected by thee. Help us to come closer to you this morning. As we enter that Sabbath, may the word of my mouth be directed by you, the words, and may the meditation of my mind by thy Holy Spirit. For we ask for the early and the latter rain and the refreshing of the baptism of the Holy Spirit afresh upon each and every one of us. We ask for your protection and your guidance that you may send legions of angels to Israel and that you may protect the people in Iran, Persia, and all these other countries from themselves, from these evil demonic forces round about them. For we ask for peace for the people in Israel. And we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. As we enter your Sabbath, we ask that we open thy word with anticipation and expectation that you will speak to us through thy word. It is our prayer in the holy name of Elohim Yeshua. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. <clears throat> As we gradually ventured last night into a study, I'd like to continue that study this morning. And I'd like to gradually share with us that you may be able to reach the ministry at 540-370-1844 or at 7danielrevelation at gmail.com. As we open the word... I'd like to ask each and every one of us to take an opportunity to take notes. Um, many of us are having some difficulties, and we know that many things are troubling for everyone. But as we can see, our topic is entitled, Christ Dash the Lawgiver. We've had our prayer this morning, our scripture and text is found in Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 16. Jeremiah made the chapter of, or the book of Songs, of Solomon. And we will read chapter 5, verse 16. My beloved. Verse 16. His mouth is most sweet. Yeah. He is altogether lovely. This is my beloved. And this is my friend. O daughters of Jerusalem. He is speaking to us this morning and the outpouring of his love and his grace that he shared with us. We have known and studied and we've heard many, many powerful speakers and students and laymen speaking of the death, resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach in Hebrew. We also know that many people have left the church for spiritual reasons, political reasons, and for right doctrines right confirmation in scripture in regards to what would occur in the last days with the people that he's called out of Babylon. This morning I'd like to read a short synopsis in the book entitled Christ Our Savior by Ellen G. White. Christ Our Savior by Ellen G. White and I will be on page 120. The topic is Death of Christ. In reading your hearing, it was not the fear of death nor the pain of the cross that made Christ's suffering so terrible. It was the crushing weight of the sins of the world and a sense of separation from his Father and his Father's love that broke his heart 
and brought death so soon to the Son of God. Christ felt much as sinners will feel when they awake to realize the burden of their guilt and that they have forever separated themselves from the joy and peace of heaven. Angels held, angels beheld with amazement the agony of despair borne by the Savior. His anguish of mind was so intense that the pain of the cross was hardly felt by him. Nature itself was in sympathy with the scene. The sun shone clearly until midday when suddenly it seemed to be blotted out. All about the cross it became dark as the blackness midnight. This supernatural darkness lasted fully three hours. Three hours. The eye could pierce the gloom surrounding the cross. The, a nameless terror took possession of all present. The cursing and revealing seized. Men, women, and children fell upon the earth in object terror. Lightnings, lightnings excuse me, occasionally flashed forth from the cloud and revealed the cross and the crucified Redeemer. All thought their time of retribution had come. Had come. So are we seeing the eclipse sharing something with us in the world? Are we seeing the devastation of the Green Deal, La Dato Si, taking place in all the denominations? Do we see the writings of Francis I emphasizing Sunday observance? Do we see people within the churches looking for the truth, hopping from church to church, listening to speakers and criticizing whether they were correct or rather they were wrong, we're discussing the messages for these last days. Our Savior was crucified for the specific reason of sin. He took upon Him this humongous work that we ourselves to today have no idea spiritually how tragic it's been. He's losing people, he's winning people, but many, many are not grounded in the truth today. We need to be grounded because we individually are going to be in courts. In your workplace, you're going to be tested, and you don't know, but you're going to be tested by questions from your colleagues in your employment areas of your various employment around the world. We discussed last night some important words. And I'd just like to rephrase to a few. For example, ecumenism. Ecumenism is a distinctive characteristic of the life of the churches, plural, all of them, even the Seventh day Adventist churches. However, in our own time, and the goal is the inclusion of all Christians in a single organic structure under the primacy of the Pope. However, in our study I will be discussing the third angel's message, the mark of the beast, what the issues have been <coughs> all along, and how it now it's right before us, as if no one cares, no one's aware. The third angel's message is an identification of the papacy as that great beast of revelation and the Antichrist, the great usurper of Christ's offices and positions in the leadership of his people. As we turn to Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 16. Turn with me to Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 16, which is our opening verse. We read, <coughs> Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 16. His mouth is most sweet. His mouth is most sweet. As we venture into our study, Christ as the lawgiver is part 90. In Psalms 33, verse 6 and 9, by the word of the Yahweh were the heavens made. Can we hear an amen? By the word, because it was his word that breathed into existence the earth. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. 
For he speak, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Can we hear an amen? Turn with me to John chapter 3, and I will be reading three verses, 3, 4, and 10. All things were made by him. Hear me now. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Can we hear an amen? In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 4. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 10. The same matter that happened in the beginning is occurring today. The world doesn't know him. Why? Turn with me to Malachi chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Malachi chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. The law of truth was in his mouth. Take note. The law of truth was in his mouth. And iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and iniquity, equity, excuse me, and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, pastor should keep knowledge, evangelist should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. You notice it's talking about the law? It's talking that through his mouth he spoke and it was done. In contrast to the mouth of the true Christian, excuse me, I inserted that. In contrast to the mouth of the true Christ, dash creator and lawgiver, the papal antichrist is a destroyer, an enemy of God's law. Remember this. The prophecy spoke of him, saying, in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8 and verse 25. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn out of ten horns. And by this time in this year already, through the studies, you should know who this little horn is. It's Catholicism, Rome. The Catholic Church, more better. Let me kind of break it down. Okay? Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Those three horns were the Ostrogoths, the, well, let me share that in a minute. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. It was doing it then, and it's doing it now in greater political power and religious power. So the Hurlii, the Ostrogoths, and the Vandals were all plucked up from the root Every child was annihilated, disintegrated. In other words, murdered, killed, assassinated. This is what occurred. And it's all been behind the commandments of our Savior. That the Antichrist and the system and the powers have rejected time and time again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until they time times and the divided of time. Daniel 7 verse 25 is history. Indeterminate period of time of 1260 years would never be repeated again. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 13. <coughs> in reading. Revelation 13 verse 5 and 6. And there was given unto him a mouth, there it is again, a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty-two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim, to blasphemy his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So he blasphemed the sanctuary in heaven, he blasphemed Elohim Yahweh, Elohim Yeshua, in various, various ways. And it's talking about the sanctuary in heaven. Not the sanctuary on earth. That sanctuary in heaven. Because sin began in heaven. Therefore. <coughs> the seventh day Sabbath is the memorial of the true Christ creative power. 
The changing of the law from the seventh day Sabbath to the Sunday is an attempt by the Antichrist to deny the creative power of Elohim. So you got seven spirits in the sanctuary, you got seven churches. We're down to Laodicea and the revival of the Philadelphia church is now to be proclaimed in which they themselves give the procession and join it. When I say give, they themselves in faith give reverence to Yeshua HaMashiach who leads that procession. They give the midnight cry, the 144,000 give the loud cry that I will be sharing in this study. They themselves are found worthy. These are various denominations, folks. These are people from different walks of life. They've all fallen. We've all done different things, ignorantly, deliberately. But these people have repented. Then you have the counterfeit. Out of ten horns, that little horn pops up, which is papal Rome that ruled for 260 years. So the people that go to church on Sunday, they don't understand these prophecies because these pastors in the other Sunday-keeping churches have not accepted the correct historicist view of prophecy. Instead, they want to preach to them Petrism, Futurism, which are all Jesuit Catholic doctrine teachings that come from them. So someone is lost and someone is correct. Our Savior is here to, to prepare a people. To prepare a people and to help us all to understand that it is over. And He is attempting to help us all to understand that His love is more greater than the system of an ecumenical movement. The prophetic contrast between Christ and Antichrist. Question. What is thy beloved more than another beloved? So I will give a comparison on Christ and the Antichrist. Turn with me to Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. Let's go to Zechariah. We won Bible studies this morning. So we're going to go to Zechariah. After this study for our divine service, I will be sharing you the chapters of the first, second, and third angel's message, the fourth angel's message, and the message they took out of the corrupt books of the great controversy, so that you will be able to see which books are correct and which ones are not, so that you will be sealed. There's going to be a lot of mourning, mourning people. There's going to be a lot of people lost. Okay, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. And I decided to do it this way so that I can speak to us this morning. Can you hear an amen? Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. In reading, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Yahweh of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Yahweh. Okay? Now let us do the comparison and go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians in chapter 2. So we're going to do a comparison here this morning. And I hope that all of you will be okay with it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And let us read, beginning with verse 3. Let no man deceive you, my friends. I answer that. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come an apostasy first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Remember this, the son of perdition. Verse 4. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worship. So that he is Elohim, sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim, the Pope. So he sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. So you notice in Ze Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12, he shall build the temple of the Yahweh. In other words, he's building his people mentally, spiritually. This is what he's doing. He's not talking about a, a home, a temple, a mansion. It's not talking. He's building his people up spiritually. <coughs> in Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12, he is the man whose name is the branch. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, He is that man of sin called the highest priest and pontiff, pontiffus maximus. You see the comparisons here is what they've done? 
Now let us go to Zechariah 13. He, the king of kings, shall sit and rule. That's the objective here. Go with me to Daniel chapter 11, verse 36 to 37, referring to this Antichrist as we do the comparison. He is a willful king, the little horn kingdom, papal Rome. In Matthew 14, verse 33, Son of God, now go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Son of Perdition. The Zechariah 3, verse 7, 8, and 9. He is the stone. Zechariah 4, verse 7. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. The Imperial Roman Catholic Church claimed to be the stone kingdom of Daniel chapter 2. Now let us go down to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6 through 10. He is the head stone. It's Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But the Antichrist claims to be the cornerstone. St. Peter. The Pope claims to be the head of the church. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8. He is the servant. The branch. The Antichrist. The Pope's title is Servus Serulunum. Revelation 19, verse 9, he is the lamb. The Antichrist says he is the beast. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, he is the lamb with seven eyes. In Daniel 7, verse 8, that I shared last night, he is the little horn with man's eyes, the little holy sea, or the holy sea, may I say. Go with me to Zechariah 3, verse 9. He is the stone with seven eyes. Those seven eyes are in the sanctuary in heaven. Go with me to John, just a few more. John chapter 14, verse 15. He sent the Comforter, the Paraclete, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, his representative. Take note. The Pope, the Antichrist, the Pope claims to be the Vicar of Christ, a representative. Because Philly D. In Revelation 21, verse 9, his bride is the pure woman of Revelation chapter 12. Compare with the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 17, verse 4 and 5. His church is the harlot. The daughters, the Seventh-day Adventist church. Testimonies, volume 5, page 250. How has the holy city become a harlot? Seventh-day Adventist church. That goes down deep into hell. Review on hell, volume 3, page 69. I got four more. Take note. Revelation 21, referring to Christ, verse 10. His church is New Jerusalem. Pray for Jerusalem. They're at war right now. Comparison with the Antichrist, Revelation 18, verse 2 is the fourth angel's message. His city or church is Babylon, Babylonia. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. His mother is New Jerusalem. Can we hear an amen? Babylon is mother of harlots. Protestant churches are her daughters. Seventh-day Adventist church is a harlot. Rome is the mother of church, says. Go with me to John chapter 10, verse 28. No man can pluck his church from his hand. No man can pluck his people from his hand. That word church refers to people. Here's what the Antichrist says. He made war with the saints to destroy them. Daniel 7 verse 21. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. Our last text in Malachi chapter 2 verse 6 and 7. From his mouth went forth the law, the Torah, on the Feast of Tabernacles. It was the Feast of Pentecost, Feast of Weeks. That's when the law went forth from his mouth. The Antichrist says in Daniel 7, verse 8, The little horn, a mouth 
and verse 25, speaking great things to think to change times and laws, to change the sacred seasons, the Moedines, and the Torah. So I don't want to go too deep with this. But here's clarification. Eventually I'll have it on another study so you can see it all on the screen. But I wanted to have your attention this morning. So that you will understand that we've come to that time. Prophetic contrast between Christ and Antichrist is taking place today. Everybody's looking for the correct message. And everybody's listening to this air message that's going on. But they're still holding on to the pastors. They're still told, holding on to their friends in the church. But they're not holding on to the scriptures and doing the comparison. The early reign is given to us to comprehend this information. The early reign represents statutes, judgments, ordinances. The word reign is referred to in Hebrew, yara. The definition of both of those words in English and in Hebrew is statutes, judgments, and ordinances, Torah. What else do you all want? Do you want some hallelujah dancing going on? We're going to be okay. No, that's not what it's referring to. It's referring to studying, opening, contrasting, looking at your references in your books, understanding the definition in your dictionaries, understanding what this all means to me, me alone. That once I grasp it, then I can preach it. Send me, Yeshua. I'm ready. Are you really? We can claim Isaiah chapter 6 or chapter 8 verses 1 through 6. And maybe we might live through this for another small time, but question, what is thy beloved more than another beloved? So the contrast is between Christ and the Antichrist. So here, you have the Torah, statutes, judgments, and ordinances, the health law, stress code, verbal communication, respecting one another, patience. However, the Antichrist has homosexuals, lesbians, murderers, organizations of governments that are corrupt, and they themselves are corrupt. And what the Antichrist has done is that they repudiated the whole Sabbath, Shabbat day, and every specific key component is correct from the Shabbat. They transferred it and transferred it and transferred it into the Lord's day, Sunday, giving reverence to the sun God, giving reverence to Satan the devil. This is the history of the panorama that is occurring right now. And our Savior wants us to come out of this confusion. The positive and negative aspects of the third angel's message is found in Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 9, Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 16. And you may also see Testimonies, volume 8, 197, and Testimonies, 92. We, as a people, must understand that if we do not see this message more clearly, then we have that something is wrong. Let us go to the first one, Song of Songs, chapter 5. I wonder why everybody was always sharing that the book of Song of Songs is about poetry, when it's not. It's prophecy. Isn't it an history on our, how our Savior has used prophets and people to be their voice? Their mouthpiece. Song of Songs, chapter 5 and verse 9. There are eight chapters in Song of Songs. Song of Songs, chapter 5 and verse 9. What is thy beloved more than another beloved? O thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou doest so charge us? What is it? Surely, the messages and the prophecies have been given to us. Yes, it has. Now, let us read verse 16. Verse 16. His mouth is most sweet. You hear it? There's a verse again. His mouth is most sweet, given the messages. His mouth spoke. It was created. It was done. His mouth is most sweet. Yeah, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, Yeshua. 
This is my friend. O daughters of Jerusalem. You all claim you want to be in the kingdom. You got the gift of prophecy. You got the spirit of prophecy. Our Savior says, Do you have him in your minds and in your hearts? That's what he's asking us this morning. Don't be ashamed if we've been lied to. It is our responsibility to repair the breach that was broken many, many years ago. We are to do the work that is in Isaiah chapter 58. We are the repairs of the breach. We are the Philadelphia church. We are the last generation that proclaims the first, second, and third angel's messages in its entirety. We await Yeshua HaMashiach to give us the fourth angel's message in Revelation chapter 18 to go forward. That Babylon has finally fallen. That day is coming. <clears throat> What is thy beloved more than another beloved? It is possible to identify the beast of the third angel's message or counterfeit only as we know the true Christ. The third angel's message is in verity a presentation of the branch that Yahweh are a righteousness. Let me share with you. The third angel's message is in verity a presentation of the branch that Yahweh are righteousness. This righteousness is manifested in the keeping of his law, his Torah, his commandments, statutes, judgments, and ordinances, including the seventh day Shabbat, or Sabbath. It identifies the true and the false in major aspects of worship and obedience and builds the kingdom of Elohim. It is the message which must be given with a loud cry to all the world and will be attended by the latter rain, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're waiting for. So while destruction is occurring in Israel, destruction will be occurring in the United States. Destruction will be occurring in every state, every country, every third world country. It will be horrifying. Because what man has done in his leadership today is bringing this all about. While the pastors and evangelists are preparing the people to give the messages, they are being taught in the churches. And if you're not being taught in the churches, then you better return and study the correct messages because no one else is going to teach us but Jesus Christ through his agent, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the comforter. As I close, bear with me. In Mark 15, verse 34, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In the meantime, the darkness had settled over Jerusalem and the plains of Judea. As all eyes were turned in the direction of the fated city, they saw the fierce lightnings of God's wrath directed toward it. Suddenly the gloom was lifted from the cross and in clear trumpet-like tones they seemed to resound through creation. Jesus cries, Jesus cried, it is finished. John chapter 10 verse 30. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Luke 23 verse 40. A light encircled the cross, and the face of the Savior shone with a glory like unto the sun. He then bowed his head upon his breast and died. The multitude about the cross stood paralyzed, and with beaded breath gazed upon the Savior. Again darkness settled upon the earth, and a hoarse rumbling like heavy thunder was heard. This was accompanied by a violent earthquake. Let's prepare for the coming of Christ. It's going to occur very quickly. These messages, they're going to occur very quickly. They're going to be given very quickly. And by the way, we won't be waiting for people to accept the message. Because we have been empowered by the latter rain to give the message. These people don't wait. It is like a horse in a race. 
to give the message, to win the prize. May you all receive the Holy Seal this morning. Our Father who art in heaven, as we close, we ask for your grace and your mercy as we transition to the divine service. As we lift you up, Yeshua, we thank you for the love and the blessings you bestowed upon your people and your presence. Help us to tread carefully on this Sabbath, rightly dividing the word of truth, which is our responsibility. In the name of Yeshua we pray. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. Amen.